Welcome everyone to another Weather Center Tropical Update. We are back in the Weather Center still tracking not only what's happening in the Eastern Pacific with two areas of interest, one of those currently still being Tropical Storm Alvin, but we're also closely attempting to dial in when it is the Atlantic, particularly the Caribbean or the Southwestern Gulf, could attempt its first try at developing a named storm. Now, for those of you brand new to the channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button button and a huge welcome to those of you who were kind enough to smash that subscribe button during the last couple of updates and live discussions we've done here on the channel. It means a tremendous amount to have you along for the ride as we prepare for the final moments before we turn the calendar over to June 1st and we start the upcoming hurricane season. So with that being said, if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them in the comment section down below. I'll get back to you at my earliest convenience. Be sure you give that like button a little nudge, and let's get started. So... Here is the latest on the National Hurricane Center homepage. We do still have Tropical Storm Alvin, a 50 mile an hour tropical storm. Central pressure is at 1,001 millibars, currently moving northwest at 10 miles an hour. Now we also had this bad boy develop over the last 48 hours. I believe it was designated about sometime early yesterday morning for an 0 for 20 shot. You can see the formation chances in the next seven days have been nudged upwards by 10. We're at a 30% shot, something does develop and within the next week the next name on the list would be Barbara now this is going to be pivotal in what happens on our side of the basin the more eastern pacific action we continue to see or how much it dominates there's willow again got a photo bomb the video the more Eastern Pacific activity we get, it will honestly be a big detriment to anything near Central America, the Yucatan, the Bay of Campeche. And right now, there is a bit of a discontinuity between our heavy hitter models, the GEFS and the European Ensemble Outlook. And I'm going to show you exactly why it is we're getting such dorky model runs, in my opinion. First things first, though, here is a look at Alvin. was looking fairly healthy about 36 hours prior. Now you can see we've got some dry air and some southerly wind shear beginning to act on the storm. You can see a lot of the main thunderstorm action and heaviest rainfall is now loaded to the north side of the low pressure, and the southern flank is beginning to erode. You can kind of see a lot of that low-level spin there. Still a fast-moving tropical storm. It has really good characteristics about it, but a lot of that moisture is just going to continue to get strung up over Mexico, Baja, California. California, and I wouldn't be surprised if my old teammates down at the 25th OWS in Tucson are also watching for the potential for an increase in their thunderstorm action and heavy rainfall through the desert southwest. Across the rest of the basin, however, because we are in that suppressed phase of the MJO, we're starting to get a little bit of that action here in the eastern Pacific. Note the difference in our moisture and the large anticyclone that is currently present over Central America, Mexico, the southern periphery of Texas, driving some significant significant weather for us here in the deep south, the southeast United States. If you look, the Atlantic is very quiet. It is very dead, to tell you the truth, and there aren't any prevalent signals until we get closer to what I do think will be Friday the 13th in June. I think that's very symbolic. Hurricane Charlie back in 2004 came through on Friday the 13th, so if my inner scary movie fan has anything to say about what's expected to take shape and when we might get Andrea on the board. I'm thinking closer to Friday the 13th, which still lines up with what our general thinking has been over the last several weeks. Here's the latest in the probabilities, courtesy of the European model. This is the ECMWF website. And I'll tell you right now, if we do not get a named storm attempt between, again, the 5th-ish of June and about the 15th, maybe as late as the 17th or 18th, as highlighted by Climate Prediction Center, I think we are cooked, to, for the lack of better term. I don't think we're going to see anything substantial after that. You take a look at our probabilities, and they're already beginning to spike once you get into the valid time of June 2nd through the 9th of June. Then you get into that window between the 9th and the 16th, targeting around Friday the 13th, and you can see that's when we are off to the races. Not only is the Eastern Pacific still showing about a 60-70% shot of something trying to organize, but now 
there in the southwestern and western Caribbean over the Yucatan pulling up into the Gulf, which has been pretty much the repetition, the song and dance we've been anticipating given the setup and are steering across the Atlantic. And it's pretty fantastic, too. You can get an idea of where our subtropical high pressure, the Atlantic high, the Bermuda Azores high is. Just looking at the signature here, very suppressed ITCZ. And then whatever decides to develop along its southwest flank is going to get lifted up into somewhere around the Gulf Coast, whether it be from about New Orleans to our west coast here in central Florida. What gets lifted up could be a rain train, could be a deluge of tropical rainfall from the gyre, or could be a consolidated storm. But then after that, if you notice, as soon as we go beyond that time frame, we start to trend back down, and then towards the end of June, nothing pretty much wrapped up. So that's why I'm thinking, you know, outside of the bit of a wave train that we still have trying to manifest itself over the main development region of the Atlantic, if we don't get anything during this pulse of MJO action, we're done for, at least in terms of producing a name storm during the second or third week of June. This is what I think is the problem here. So what I have for you is going to be an overlay, and I'll go ahead and adjust it as well so you guys can get a better view of it. There we go, and I'll take myself off the screen for a little while. Let me shrink this down a little so then you can get a better view. We're looking at both the Euro and the GFS control models. And so if you look, left side is going to be your Euro, right side is going to be the GFS. And I think this is why, even though folks, I'll bring myself back up for just one second, there's a lot of talk that the GFS is still creating phantom storms. I personally don't think so. Now, am I saying that is what the solution is going to be real time? Not necessarily, but I'll show you why the models are having a bit of a discrepancy here. I'll remove myself once again and let's get started. So this is as we get into our favorable window. This is valid for 0Z on June 4th. Still pretty suppressed out there across the greater Atlantic, but we're starting to see some of those vertical velocities increase in what's called our difluent flow, spreading of the air highest up in the atmosphere around 300, 200 millibars down there in the tropics, increasing our lift. And then if you notice, as we move towards when that model is thinking, the GFS, I should say, is thinking we'll start to see development in our neighborhood right around the 8th or the 9th. Do you see a difference here? I'll change the color of the ink so we can look closer. Notice this emphasis in the vertical velocities just to the immediate south, pretty much over top the Cayman Islands in Jamaica off the northeast coastline of Nicaragua and Honduras. But then look at the Euro. We are still biasing the Eastern Pacific fairly heavily. I know we're starting to see the vertical anomalies begin to manifest over the southeast, much of the greater Antilles, into the western Atlantic, but not nearly as biased as the GFS. So it could be a propagation issue. If you go a little further in time into the 9th and the 10th, notice that the GFS now focuses the lift right over the Caribbean and starts to take that emphasis away from the Eastern Pacific, whereas the Euro is still hung up in the east pack let's fast forward a little bit further and then finally by about that fateful time frame friday the 13th second friday of june now we're starting to see some of that translation move over into our caribbean basin the caribbean sea almost all together much of central america and even the northwest quadrant of south america and even this folks to tell you the truth now notice into the 14th i'll be honest I didn't mean to pull up my full face cam there, but I'll be honest, the Euro seems to be slowing it down still. So maybe even Friday the 13th, if we don't have a representative signal to track, it could even be pushed back a little further. Our first name storm of 2024 did form, in fact, on the 19th. That was Alberto, a gyre system in the Bay of Campeche. This could take on a different quality about it. I don't think it's going to be the Bay of Campeche this time, but we'll have to continue to wait and see. We still have a fairly robust signal in our ensembles. You take a look, the Eastern Pacific on the Euro is flooded with individual members indicating the development of Barbara and then potentially a third disturbance trying to develop along the monsoonal trough. But then as we get closer to the 10th, there you go, the 11th and the 12th, finally Friday the 13th, there it is, we still have, you know, a modest signal, something worth investigating over the next several days. The same thing with the GFS, if you fast forward all the way to the end, between the 8th and the 15th, we still have a 
you know, a decent handful of ensemble members basically telling us this is still an area we want to keep an eye on. Is it going to happen between the 5th and the 9th? Probably not. I do think our models may start to get a better handle on what's expected in this region by about June 1st to maybe June 7th. But at this point in time, if I had to put any level of confidence in when we might get a yellow blip from NHC or when most of our models to include the Canadian, the German, even the Korean model, the UK model, We'll start to put a little more something something down there in terms of a low pressure trying to spin up. It'll probably be closer to June 12th, June 13th, or June 14th. Right around that time frame, Climate Prediction Center has us bullseyed. So with that being said, that's about it. That's all I've really got. Nice little short and sweet abbreviated Weather Center tropical update. I just wanted to show you a couple of things I've been looking over the last couple of days. I know I was absent yesterday. It was a long day, double duty with the United States Navy. And then over at News 6, working on more hurricane special content. I wanted to get this out to you all today before we rock into the weekend. So we're still watching... Can't take a tropical storm or any kind of named system down there off the table just yet, but our models are very back and forth. We're not very confident just yet. We have faith this is an area of interest. The Western Caribbean from about Jamaica, westward into Central America, the Yucatan, and then I'll obviously include the Bay of Campeche as well, because if that ridging that's across the Atlantic tries to extend further through the Florida Peninsula, like we have seen for much of the late spring with our 90 degree temps and cooking down here for all intents and purposes, we could see it bullied westward. The Canadian model did have a small whisper of that happening at the end of its 12Z model run today. So thank you all so much for taking some time out of your Friday. Happy Friday, for that matter, if you've stuck with me till the conclusion of this update. Thank you so much for being such a generous, accommodating, and wonderful support system and community here on the Weather Center. Again, I can't say enough how excited I am, not necessarily just for the hurricane season particularly, but I'm very excited to come into another season, the third one here, since the Weather Center came into fruition with all of you together in the same corner. It's going to be a phenomenal season in the sense of we've got that camaraderie, we've got that communication, and I'm going to keep you ahead of Mother Nature's Worst every step of the way. And that's that. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. We will talk again very soon. Be on the lookout for the notification on when we'll be doing our next live discussion pending internet connection. And I'm going to start working on my stream deck so I can have that up and running for you all. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.